This is lecture five of chapter two, Human Growth and Development, chapter on theory. And I, in this lecture, I wanna talk about the cognitive theories, um, specifically some fun names to say, you know, Piaget, uh, Vygotsky, and then another theorist, uh, another theory that I don't have a name associated with is information processing. You might be a little familiar with Piaget's theory. Um, he's the fellow that talked about what he called this, the four stages of cognitive development. So let me back up. So cognitive, you'll remember, refers to thinking. And so cognitive development is the developmental process of how we learn to think. And I've probably suggested in another lecture that this one to me is like the, the hardest for me to, to grasp with any sense of concreteness because it's kind of abstract. And how do you measure uh, how people think. Well, actually, um, cognitive psychologists have figured that out. They have figured out how you can measure how people think. Um, and I'll talk about some of those in a second, but that's really what this is about. And, and what cognitive psychologists have illustrated is that children, that they learn how to think in this pattern, in these sequences of, yeah, in these sequences that, and the development of the process of how children learn to think is fairly consistent. Well, it is consistent. And it kind of, and Piaget theorized that there were like these four stages that you had the sensory stage, which if you've hung out with an infant, you know that, that infants put everything in their mouth. You remember uh, Freud called this the oral stage, but it's the idea that they have to touch everything, that that's how they're, that's how they're learning about their environment is everything is, everything is touch. Um, in this stage, though, their researchers uh, are able to measure a phenomenon. You might want to highlight that because there is a question on the test and the quiz about what this means. It's a, called object permanence. And object permanence simply means that a child understands that objects are permanent. Um, and I'll show you a couple of videos, but the classic experiment goes is that if a child, it's why the children like peekaboo because the idea is that they don't understand that you're still behind your hands. And so every time you show back up, it's, it, it makes them giggle, it's surprising. So in this classic experiment, they'll show a child a toy, one of their toys, and they'll put it under the, a blanket and the child will lose interest. Um, they won't try to get to their favorite toy um, until, uh, I forget what age it was, but around two and a half, then if you put a toy under a blanket, then they'll get it because they understand that the object is permanent. It's just because it can't be seen doesn't mean it's not really there. It doesn't disappear. Um, and it might explain why when the caregiver leaves the room, the children get very upset because, you know, they're just, they're gone um, as opposed to they're going to come back, right? Because they're permanent. Um, and then there's been some interesting work on dogs, how dogs understand object permanence. Um, some dogs understand object permanence and others, uh, the, their ability to think. My most recent research on dogs' intelligence or dogs' cognitive abilities is that they have about the understanding of about a toddler, about a three-year-old, um, two, three-year-old. And then the next stage is some other things in there. You got egocentrism in the next stage or pre-operational. And egocentrism is, is a fancy way of saying that the world that I see is the same world that everybody else sees. A really important concept here that will show up on a quiz or an exam, so you might want to highlight that one too, is what's called theory of mind. I like to talk about theory of mind. But the theory of mind is simply a, a, a person's ability to understand. Remember, theories are ideas their ability to understand that I have a mind and you have a mind and our minds are not the same. That I might see things, I think some things, but you don't know what I'm thinking and I don't know what you're thinking. Um, and so it's, this is a really important step towards empathy, right? A really important step towards um, understanding that if I take a child, if I take your toy, you might not feel the same way about me taking your toy as I feel about me taking your toy, right? The world doesn't look the same to everybody. And it's the theory that I have a mind and you have mine too. Okay. And then you move to con 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 uh -huh, concrete operational. And that is, ooh, that's really the one about empathy, but that's not, not just that your mind is different than my mind, but if I sit on one side of the table, I can't see the same things that you see. 
that's the empathy one. So that gets around seven or 12. And then for finally, you get to the formal logical development. Um, and I don't have a good way to describe formal, formal logical because that's just not as interesting or we don't measure that one quite as much. Um, I think that this one is the one that starts to get at things like how we might, that children start to make decisions based not on what's best for them, but they have a more complicated reasoning system. And it suggests that they're using various steps in their thought processes. It's not just a, an apps, it's not just, well, I chose this because I get more candy. It's I chose this because I understand more more of a complicated reasoning system. I think that's what that one means. Um, and so we'll talk about oh another important idea of of Piaget is his idea of schemas. Schemas are um, they're a really important concept, but they're a little bit now I think they're a little difficult to kind of conceptualize. A schema is another word for that is what we call a cognitive shortcut. But it's the way that we organize what we understand around about the world. So the theory kind of goes like this, is that the brain, the brain can't remember every experience you've ever had. So the brain or our, or our thoughts, our beliefs are organized into like these categories. And you have a category for say, and I think the example that's used in the textbook is like birds, right? And your mother shows you a bird and said, you know, birds have wings and you see this creature has wings. So you come to understand that things with wings are birds. Well, then you see a plane and someone said, and it has wings, right? So the child says bird and the parent or the caregiver says, no, that's not a bird. That's a plane. Well, wait a second. The child's schema says if it has wings, it's a bird. So what are they going to do with this, with this new information? Where are they going to put it? So they have to do what's referred to as assimilate or, accom or accommodate. So they either incorporate that into the things with wings or birds, including this airplane, or they have to accommodate and rethink about what they understand about things with wings. So maybe things with wings and feathers are birds, but things with wings and no feathers are planes. Right? Well, then when you see something else with wings, is it a bird or a plane? And then you have to incorporate, assimilate, accommodate that new information. But it's, it's simply the notion that this is how our brain keeps track of information, is we create schemas. And social psychologists talk about schemas as being sort of the foundation of stereotypes and racism, because we create these schemas also about groups of people, right? So you may, um, my mom likes to tell this story about when uh, the first time I saw a black person in real life, now this would have been in the 70s, and I said, oh, look, a Sesame Street people, right? In my schema, black people were Sesame Street, right? That was the only place that I knew them to exist. So in the real world, when I saw a person who had a dark skin complexion, I explained that or understood that based on my limited schema. And so I had to learn that no, 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 that those weren't, that, that that was not a Sesame Street person. But it's the idea that we categorize people or we categorize everything, right? We categorize fast food, we categorize animals. Um, and that's just the way that our brain um, is sorting that information. And the more experience we have, the more information we can incorporate into our schemas then we create more or maybe even undo our schemas. The, the thing about the schema is, or the stereotype, is that we overlook. Uh, I'll try to find, there's a really great example of the way schemas impair our ability to see things. And the, the example goes something like this. Um, you're shown this picture of an office, right? Of an office space. And it's got some unusual stuff in it. And it's got some usual stuff in it. It's got a phone and a computer and a desk but it also has like a wine bottle and a picnic basket and some other bizarre things in it. And then you're asked later, did you see the picnic basket or what did you see in the office? And people will claim to have seen things that weren't there 
because they have in their mind this cognitive shortcut of what's in an office. So they'll have seen pencils and pens, you know, the notebooks, even though they weren't in the image. And they will not have noticed things that were there because like the wine bottle and the picnic basket, because those things are typically in an office. So schemas limit, um, in, inhibit, make it difficult for us to, form, to often recall actual memories. It's also the reason that a lot of courts are going away from, um, or actually don't, uh, what we call eyewitness testimony, doesn't have as much weight in the court system because people may in their mind have like, this is what that event or this is what that kind of person would look like and that stereotypes, right? And there's a, I'll try to find that. There's a really cool video on that one. Okay, I have gone over 10 minutes and I didn't get to the other two cognitive theories. I'm gonna wrap this one up. And the next one, I'll talk about the cognitive theory.